So when we did Little Man Computer, uh, we were walking through the instruction cycle uh, using our instructions and our made up hardware. So what I want to take a moment to do now as we transition into talking about instructions for real machines is do a comparison because I think that would be really helpful. So on the left hand side here, we see uh, the little man computer instruction cycle, right? So, you know, the little man went to the, the program counter and he read the location, right? And then he walked to a mailbox, which we now know, right, is our control units, bus lines being activated uh, to get the information um, to the actual mailbox, which means that we took the address and we put it in the memory address register and then memory activated and then the, the data would come out in the memory data register, right? But let's stick to Little Man Computer for a moment. So Little Man would walk over to the mailbox and he would read what's inside, right? Um, once he did that, we had the end of our fetch, right? Then he would decode that information and he'd see that it's a store. So he reads the instruction and sees that it's a store. So now knowing that it's a store, he knows that he has to get information from the accumulator and put it into a mailbox, right? So he walked over to the mailbox or the calculator, sorry, and he grabbed the information and brought it over to the mailbox that it was supposed to go into uh, and stored it there. And then that was his execute, right? And then he incremented the program counter uh, and he did it all over again. Now, how would that same operation happen in a real machine? Well, the action of him reading the program counter would be us taking the value of the program counter, turning on the bus line between the program counter and the memory address register with a control line, and then populating the, the latches in the memory address register with whatever bits were in the program counter. So if the program counter had, you know, all zeros, a lot of zeros, and then 101, that would be a five in binary. So that same string, if it's a 16-bit, uh, you know, addressable memory space, you'd have 16 bits in the program counter uh, with, you know, uh, 14 or 13 uh, zeros and then 101. And you take those and you put it in the address register. And then the address register would then activate memory. All the bits on that fifth um, line would, would come out, and we know that in the, in the 6502 there would be eight of them, right? So we'd have an eight-bit word size, so those bits would then go to the memory data register, um, and we would then retrieve what's in the memory data register and put it into the instruction register, right? So again, another bus would be activated between the memory data register, and that information would then go into the instruction register. Now, now we do the fetch, right? So in the fetch, we're going to break apart that instruction and we're going to use our control unit to activate the, the different bus lines and, and components that we need to work with. In particular, in this one, we're going to take the operand part, that's when the brackets where we have the, the address there, the ADD, um, we're gonna take that operand that represents the address and we're gonna put it into the memory address register, just like we did when we wanted to get the instruction, but this time we wanna do a store, so we have to tell the memory address register at what address do we wanna store. And that information came from the operand in the instruction that we retrieved when we decoded it. Now the next step is to take, um, in little man computer speak, uh, the, the value that was in the accumulator, which we know now is just a general purpose register. So let's call it uh, register A. Um, that, that's, you know, perfectly valid. Uh, so we're going to take the value of register A, and we're also going to turn on the control lines, take whatever's in that, and put that data into the memory data register, right? So again, there's a control line that basically turns on that says, okay, you know, A puts its information on the data bus, um, but remember, everything can see the data bus that, that is affiliated with it. So in order to make sure that the memory data register gets it, we're going to turn on that control line from the control unit so that the memory data register allows whatever's on the data bus to be saved to its gated latches. Once the memory address register and the memory data register have everything they need, then memory will activate and it will store.
store whatever is in the memory data register at the location that we put into the memory address register. Um, and then lastly, we're going to increment the program counter. We're going to, uh, you know, bring that up to whatever value it needs to be to read the next address. Now, we just metaphorically say it's, it's incrementing by one, uh, but in a real machine, that's not actually always the case, uh, but we don't need to get into that now. But just to, as to why that I said that, um, in Little Man Computer Assembler, we always assume that the op uh, code and the operands only take up one place in memory. However, uh, that's not always the case. Soon we're going to be talking about uh, CISC and RISC processors um, and the difference in the instruction being a complex instruction uh, versus a reduced one and things like that. So it is not always the case that the instruction will fit in one memory location. Remember in our 6502 example, uh, we said that memory locations only hold one byte of data. So one byte is eight bits. And eight bits is not enough to cover most instructions. So you might have an eight bit opcode and then you might have additional memory locations used after it for operands. And they may or may not always be the same amount of operands. Um, so your instruction may actually be of varying sizes. So you might actually have to retrieve, say, multiple locations from memory in order to get the whole instruction. So you might have to increment the program counter multiple times to account for that. Now, uh, we'll get more into the details of that later. For right now, we can just abstractly say you're going to increment the program counter. But just be aware uh, when we get down the road later that, uh, you know, you may or may not be incrementing it once, essentially. Uh, it's not always as simple as saying, you know, I'm going to increment it once. So here we did a store. Uh, let's look at a real instruction for load. Uh, most of this is the same. So, you know, program counter to memory address register, uh, memory, the what comes out of the memory data register that we then put into the instruction register. We decode it. We take that operand in this case for the address the same way we did before. We put it back in the memory address register. Now, remember, this is where we want to go to memory to get some data. Um, and then we activate memory and then what comes out, we take from the memory data register and we put it in our register, in this case, register A, and then we increment the program counter again, right? That's pretty much the same as the last one. We're just loading from memory instead of storing to it. Here's the store again, uh, also an add. So very similar, get the instruction, same way. Um, this time, because we're using data in memory to add to what's existing in a register, we're going to, just like before with the load, put that um, memory address into the memory address register. But this time we're going to take what comes out and we're going to add through the ALU what was already in register A to the value that we got from the memory data register. And then in this case, put the value back in register A. Now later when we get into um, actual instruction sets, we'll see that there's actually multiple ways to deal with this. We're still kind of uh, taking real hardware now and explaining it through the terms of kind of little men and computer instructions. Uh, but for right now, that's sufficient. And the program counter again gets incremented. Um, and then I have here all of the different instruction cycles. So uh, please take a look through these and make sure that uh, they do in fact make sense.